Hey guys, I hope you're having a great day today. Feels fantastic outside. Anyway, I wanted to share something with you and it's gonna take you stepping out of the box with me for a minute. Um, this was a few years ago, it might've been six or, about six or seven years ago. I kept having these dreams of these symbols in my, in the dream and I didn't understand what all that meant. So I got to where when I'd wake up, I'd write them down and I got to looking them up to try to find them online. Well, I found out that they were the secret code of Murray Queen of Scots. Blew my mind. I was like, I, you know, I heard about the story about Murray Queen of Scots back in high school, but that, I didn't think nothing else about it. But for me to dream of those symbols was flipping me out, you know. I'm like, thought it was something spiritual, you know, like, what are you trying to say here? Anyway, the more I done research on Mary Queen of Scots, the more my mind was blown, totally. And I know I've tried to tell my family this, and they all think I'm crazy. But anyway, that ain't nothing new. I thought I would share with you, uh what blows my mind. And at the end of this video, I'm gonna put pictures. Now, you will, I will, the pictures I'm gonna post will have uh, Mary Queen of Scots grandchildren. She didn't live to get to see those grandchildren because like everybody knows, she was beheaded. But if she hadn't have lived, those would have been her grandchildren because they were children of her son. Anyway. I'm going to tell you the things that I have in common with that lady. It just totally blows my mind. I mean, it's just so much I have in common with her that it's plum eerie. Seriously. Okay, Murray's birthday is December 8th. That is my current husband's birthday, which probably has no relevance, but still. And uh, her first official day as queen was December 15th. And that is my birthday. Uh, her, her, her first husband's name was uh, Francis de Valois. I guess that's how you say that. Anyway, his first name was Francis. And uh, he was going to be the king of France when his father died, which he later became the king of France. But anyway, his name was Francis. My first husband's name was Franklin. Um, her first husband, Francis, the day that he became king of France was December 2nd, and that is the birthday of my first husband, Frank. Okay. Her dog, she had a dog, and it was a Scottish Terrier, which I have a Scottish Terrier, and her name is Elsa. Her mother signed an agreement for Murray to marry Francis on April 19th. My mother was born on April 19th. Murray's mother was from a place called Lorraine over in France. And Lorraine is my middle name. Mary's father was James V of Scotland. And my grandfather's name is James and my brother's name is Scott. Uh, let's see. Later in life, Mary had a hernia and gastric problems, which I do too. And she had to drink milk a lot to take care of her stomach, which I do most time on a daily basis, but anyway. And most of hers was caused from stress and anxiety. And I can totally relate to that, people. Anyway, she had greenish brown eyes, which is the same color as mine. Uh, she would read and draw in her pastime, and she would do that, uh, what is it, where they crochet? I guess. Uh, she was very close to her mother, which I am. I'm very close to my mother. 
She had a half brother, which I do. I have a half brother, Adam. Um, Mary's second husband was Scottish, and they was from Scotland. My second husband's family is from Scotland. Um, Mary and her second husband had one son together, and me and my second husband had one son together, Daniel. Uh, she loved riding horses, which I absolutely love riding horses. Even, the, even if I fall off and bust my butt, I still love it. Uh, she was through from a horse, which caused her pain later in life, and I've been thrown from a horse, and I know I'll reap percussions of that later. Um, Mary's second husband was determined to live at his father's home because his father had passed away, but his father was like a trader or whatever. But anyway, he was determined that he was going to live at his father's home. So he did. And he stayed soused the whole time he was there and let it fall to ruins. Yeah. Um, Murray was in prison for 19 years, which caused her depress depression and anxiety and was claustrophobic, and so am I. Uh, my, one of my biggest fears ever since I've been little was that I would be beheaded. And she was beheaded. But I've always had that's a big fear. I would even dream, I've had dreams of being beheaded. It's weird, but it's true. And I have scars on my neck and on my head that, I don't know, they said it took three swipes of the ax to completely chop her head off and I have three marks right through here on my neck, which a lot of people's got marks, but you know. Uh, Mary's son had her buried at Westminster Abbey and at one time my son Daniel's best friend's name was Abbey I just thought that was cool so I threw it in her <laughs> she was the same height as me uh, from birth until she was about 12 years old she was mainly overseen by her grandmother so was I um, Mary's main language was French. She spoke six languages. And my grandfather taught me how to count to 10 in French when I was like six years old. Un, deux, trois, quatre, six, six, sept, huit, neuf, dix. See, you never forget. Mary was the first bride to wear white at a wedding. If I was going to get married in today's time, I'd wear a black wedding dress. I mean, you know, if you're going to get married, we might as well go in full mourning. I'm just saying. Um, she had two granddaughters that she never lived to see and a grandson. So do I. But I got to see mine. Thank God in heaven. She was left-handed and right-handed. It's ambidextrous, which is so am I. Okay, I wrote all this down, so I, it's a lot to remember. Uh, she had big ears, and so do I. Uh, Mary's husband, Francis, eventually, when he died, he died in December. Frank, my first husband, was born in December. Mary's envoy to England. His name was Nicholas. And years ago, when I was real little, I decided to call my guardian angel Nicholas for some reason. I don't even know where I got the name. It just, I've just started. I've always called my guardian angel Nicholas. Always. The 
her English secretary's name was William Cecil, and my grandfather's name was Cecil. Um, my grandfather's sister's name was Mildred, and his mother's maiden name was Cook. Mary and her second husband slept in separate rooms. So do I and me and my husband now, we sleep in separate rooms. Um, her private secretary's name was David. They were good friends and I have a good friend named David. Uh, on March the 9th, Mary had a small party with close friends and family the day David, her friend, died. I have been with family on March the 9th for 26 years now, as it is Dustin, my son's birthday. Uh, Mary's friend David was murdered by a name, man named Patrick who fell ill and died three months later. And I have an uncle named Patrick. One of uh, Mary's castles was called the Fountain Blue. And my mother used to take me to this restaurant all the time in Kingsport that was called the Fountain Blue. It's just weird how things, you know. Anyway. Um, Mary, when she married her second husband, her brother exploded. He went off. They got in a huge argument and didn't speak for several months. And that happened to me and my brother when I married my second husband. Mother's Mary died from dropsy disease, and my mother had dropsy disease when she was little. It's just so much I've got in common with this lady. It's just weird. Now, I'm not saying that, uh, that I believe in reincarnation or anything like that, but I have so much in common with that woman that I can look at her life, and my life is equal to her. I mean, it's just amazing how much my life and her life is so much alike. It's weird. I mean, it's really creepy. Weird creepy. And I've tried to tell my kids, and they just think I'm retarded, you know. But I thought I'd share it with you. Now, at the end of this video, I'm going to post pictures of my family member, some of my family members, and Mary's family members. And they resemble each other. It's it's plum weird, I'm telling you. But we're all about things weird, right, people? There's nothing wrong with uh, stepping outside the box for a minute. That don't make everything true, you know? It's good to look at stuff outside the box. So if if I was Mary Queen of Scots in a, in a past life, if there is a such thing, then I have been absolutely wealthy. I have been absolutely poor in this lifetime, trust me. So, I mean, you don't know, you get to heaven, you meet Jesus and all that, and you hang out for a little while, you don't know, he might send you back to learn more stuff, who knows? Anyway, it's a beautiful day. They tell you to stay in the house, but I don't think, me personally, I don't think it'd be anything wrong with going outside as long as you don't go around a whole bunch of people. You know, stepping on your porch and get some fresh air. I can't stand being closed in like that, you know? But anyway, I know y'all think I'm crazy, but I thought I'd share it with you a little bit. I've been writing a book. Let me show you this. This is really cool, too. I've been writing a book. I write a letter to my children from way back. It's a whole book. From way back when they was little. See? And it explains why they have two different daddies. Explains everything. 
and they can have two different daddies all they want, but they are both mine. And that's just the way it is. Look how cute they are. <laughs> anyway, I'm gonna get off here and check out the pictures, okay? I know, I'm not crazy. But it's just weird how things are connected. I don't know why I was dreaming of those symbols, but it sure enough turned out to be her secret code. She wrote in code. She was beheaded by Queen Elizabeth, the second daughter of um, the big old, big old fat king. What was his name? Henry VIII. Yeah. She was Anne Boleyn's daughter. And uh, she was scared to death of Mary, her cousin. Because Mary had a legitimate right to her throne. But in today's terms, if you go by the way things are now, then actually she didn't. Because uh, Elizabeth, uh, Henry VIII's daughter, was actually the le the legitimate one that should have been queen, not Mary Queen of Scots, because she was like her cousin, you know. But where Mary Queen of Scots was Catholic, and Elizabeth was Protestant. They. It was a battle between Protestants and Catholics constantly while Mary Queen of Scott was alive. Anyway, the deal was made that Elizabeth was not gonna marry. She was labeled as the Virgin Queen. And uh, Mary had had a son with Darnley, her second husband. On the day of Elizabeth's well, put this way, on the day of Mary Queen of Scots' death, well, before she died, which was February 8th, and I, every year, the week of the 8th, all the way through, I get sick. I don't know, but I end up sick that whole week. Anyway, she died on, uh, Mary Queen of Scots died on February 8th. She was beheaded. Uh, anyway, uh, which everybody knows that. The thing is, um, before Queen Elizabeth died, the deal was she had a meeting with James. James was Mary Queen Scott's son. And she said, you can save your mother's life, but you will never be king. He never met his mother, you know, from a baby. She was captured or run off or whatever, but he, did, he never actually knowed his mother. So, um, she was beheaded and um, Mary, I mean, not Mary, Queen Elizabeth made him her heir. So, when those two ladies was out of the picture, he became king, which combined uh, Scotland and all them together, which made Great Britain, and he was the king. And he had chill. He had several children. Of three or two, I'm not sure. He had like four or five children. But anyway, he um, one of his sons' name was Charles, which ended up getting beheaded. But um, anyhow, he when he became king, he got beheaded which he was Mary Queen of Scots' grandson. Um, back in them days, their religion ruled their life, you know. Well, he's the one that had them all get together and decide what books went into the Bible. Now, when I was younger, I thought King James was the one that wrote the Bible. No. The men that put all the pa all the books together decided what went in the Bible worked for King James pretty much. That's why it's called the King James Version. 
they changed a lot of the words in that to appease the king. Yeah.